Getting started with interdisciplinary instruction. The goal of this presentation is to introduce or reintroduce interdisciplinary instruction, to begin to build the foundations for using it in your classrooms, and to leave with some action steps. So what is interdisciplinary instruction? Let's begin by talking about what it is not, which is teaching content areas separately. Another way to say that is we teach content areas in silos. So you teach math during your math block, your reading during your reading block, your art or your PE during those times, and they don't necessarily connect. That would not be interdisciplinary instruction. What it is, is teaching those content areas in interconnected ways. So, for example, taking math and science and ELA and connecting them together to, to answer a question or solve a real world problem. That would be interdisciplinary instruction. Um, if you want <clears throat> to think about it, it's really how our lives are anyway. So you can think about maybe gardening or hiking or sports. Those are all things that we might interact with or do in our real life that are interdisciplinary. If you took something out of those, if you took a content area out of that, it would completely change what you're talking about. So if I'm thinking about baseball, you could have science and math and health PE all connected. But if you took something out like the math part, it would be a completely different sport. There would be no scoring, there would be no stats, it would be a completely different ballgame, right? So why would you move from the way we're doing things now, which is siloed content, to a more interdisciplinary approach? Because it's engaging and relevant for our students, and quite frankly for you as well. Uh, as I've said before, interdisciplinary instruction models the real world, the worlds our students live in, We've all heard the question, when, are my, when am I ever gonna use this? And now we're gonna use that, this, in a real life way. Using ideas and projects that are relevant to our students. When we do that, we turn things around and we tailor the curriculum to fit our students. We can create experiences where students can direct their own learning by exploring and inquiring, and inquiring into a topic they can pull from and build upon their own backgrounds, experiences, their strengths and ideas to guide their own learning. And we can even connect it to our community, our larger community and what they need. It also builds critical thinking skills where students use and practice those skills to examine a problem or a topic. Typically, we work in groups and we consider and question our own perspectives, values, beliefs, and attitudes, and we compare them to others who might be different and start learning those interpersonal skills as well. And interdisciplinary instruction develops problem solving skills and strategies that students have to use, where students have to use what they, have, they know about content areas to build new understandings and solutions. Said another way, we can actually start from where they are and build with that and upon that. Students can begin to understand that there are many ways to solve a problem. At this point, you may be wondering, how do you begin to design for interdisciplinary instruction? So for the remainder of this time, we're gonna work through the steps to design a mini unit. There's not an expectation you're going to have a completed unit at the end of this presentation. That takes a lot of time. My goal is to guide you through the process so you get an idea of what it might look like to get started. Many of us are already familiar with backward design and backward design is a great strategy for planning interdisciplinary units. So planning an interdisciplinary unit is a lot like planning a trip. When you plan a trip, you need to know where you're starting and where you're going and you need the options for getting there. In interdisciplinary instruction, you're going to start with a guiding question or an overarching inquiry that will be your starting point. And then you're going to plan your product or your project so you know where you're going. 
And then you're going to start thinking about the learning activities that the students will experience that feed into that product or project. The idea is that we want our students working on the product or the project throughout the unit because that is actually driving the learning. Below, you will find a backward design template that is an example of something that you might use. You may have something that you already use and that's fine as well. You can make a copy. If you don't, you can make a copy of the backwards design template and use that as we move through the rest of this presentation. Our starting point will be a driving question. The driving question is the anchor for your entire lesson or unit. And all of your project and activities are going to be tied to this first question. So in many ways, it's very easy to create a question, but to create the driving question, it might take you a few uh, revisions to get it just right. So the driving question is often created with the students to anchor their learning. Uh, it might be something that you already have or something that the community needs, but involving your students helps them engage in their learning. Um, another thing you want to think about is to have it be open-ended so that there's many different ways to answer it. Your students will have many different ways to interact with this question. Below, you'll also find a driving question generator that you could use to make different revisions for your driving question to get it just right. And then you can put that on your backward planning template. So I'm going to give you an example from my classroom. When I taught second grade, I was uh, one of the standards is to look at the diversity of plants and animals in habitats. And it was spring and I wanted to talk about plants. But when I listened to what my students talked about and read about and debated, they were interested in dinosaurs. And I knew that they would really love a dinosaur unit. So that's what our project became. Who would win the dinosaur edition? A fourth grade teacher I know um, had a little patch of ground at her school and everyone at the school was talking about what to do with it. And the students definitely had plenty of suggestions. So that became the driving question for her students. So now it's time for you to pause the video and uh, play around with creating a driving question and putting it on your planning document. Step two is knowing where you want to go. And we usually call this the product or the project. So what do you want your students to have done or made by the end of this unit? Uh, there is some flexibility for you depending on your comfort or needs. You might pick one product or project. You might have, and everybody starts working on something similar, or you might have them uh, decide on what that product or project is going to be like at the end. And they could, so they can demonstrate their learning in many different ways. You want to choose what works for you and your students. The big idea and the big mind sh mindset shift that you might need to do is the product or the project is the unit. It's not something that they're doing at the end. It's what they're doing all along. So you want to pick something that they can work on throughout your whole time. Maybe it's a four to six week unit. And at the end, they might display it or they may show it off to the community. But it's not something where you're going to front load a lot of content and have them apply it at the end. The students are applying this all along. Uh, I'm going to put the video from the driving question and the product down below if you want to watch those to help you get an idea of what I'm talking about and then you can uh, put your ideas on your planning document. All right the next step is to identify your standards. Because this is interdisciplinary you want to pick from at least two different content areas. Start with something that fits naturally like ELA and social studies or science and math things that kind of fit already together, okay? You want to use your driving question to guide your decisions. And then don't pick all the standards that fit. You're going to cover many different standards in the course of your time, but you really want to focus on two or three big ones. That you, Those are the ones you're going to focus on for your feedback and your assessing. 
if you put everything that fits, it gets really big and really hard to track all of those standards. So just pick two or three big ones. For example, in my dinosaur unit, I clearly had a science standard in there, the um, life sciences and the habitats. I also knew that I wanted the students to do research on dinosaur facts, so that's ELA, reading and writing. And then I also knew from my, I, from my t hearing my students, they were interested in measuring and the size and comparing uh, dinosaurs sizes, the lengths and the heights, the footprints. So there's some math in there as well. So those are the three big standards that I picked for my unit. All right, now that you've identified your standards, you are gonna wanna find a way to assess student learning along the way. Obviously, multiple choice pen and paper kind of assessments are really not going to capture the rich kind of learning that's going to be happening in these interdisciplinary units. Rubrics are a really great way to do that. They are designed to gather data on multiple content areas, which is exactly what's going on here. They are helpful feedback tools. You can take the standards and use the standards to guide your and focus your feedback to students. You can use student-friendly language so that they can also think about what and understand better what you're asking them to do. And it can also help them reflect on their own learning along the way and to guide peer critique. So a lot of these uh, interdisciplinary units, you're asking students to think about their own learning, their metacognition, and also to think about uh, what others are doing and talk to others. And these can help guide that conversation. So if I'm thinking about my dinosaur unit, I knew I wanted them to have construction, constructive debates and conversations at the end to see who would win. And I also knew that was a skill that they needed. And the rubrics we used help guide the conversations when they talk to each other to debate which dinosaur they thought would win. All right, step five is learning activities. What are the students going to be doing along the way to feed into this project, to finish their project? And this is when you wanna think about your driving question and your product and your standards. And when you think of all those, it'll your learning activities will come from answering those three questions. For example, in the dinosaur edition, I knew I wanted my students to know how to add and subtract to compare two or more dinosaurs and know how to measure twice and pick an appropriate measurement tool. So my learning activity for that is to identify the student, the dinosaur length, that's some ELA, and then to take that information and measure their dinosaur with chalk beside another student's dinosaur. There's some math. And then they needed to figure out the difference. So there's the other um, subtraction piece, okay? So you can see how my I took that one standard and designed a learning activity to meet that standard, but also to feed into the project. Again, on your backwards planning template at the bottom, you'll see some milestones. Uh, this is another thing you wanna be planning for as you go along. How do you want to, especially how do you wanna launch your unit to really get your students engaged and excited for this? In my case, we were going to do a dinosaur hunt, and that would help me get them excited and also get them talking about dinosaurs so I could hear what they knew and didn't know about dinosaurs already. And then I also wanted to find out the, mile, the final milestone, which is making the case. They're going to do a gallery walk style event where they walk around and debate with another student and see which of their dinosaurs would win. At this point, you may be wondering how you get started. First, let's acknowledge you might be in different places. Some of you might be ready to go. Maybe you're even doing this already. And for some of you, you're just getting started and all of your plates are full, right? So maybe you think it's a good idea, but you need to get your feet underneath you before you get started. Fortunately, there are many different ways to differentiate to meet you where you are right now. One thing you do, can do to get started is to consider what you already do. 
what you already do in your classroom that can get redesigned or just reused in an interdisciplinary way. So you might be establishing a culture of inquiry. You might already do flexible learning spaces. You may work with collaboration skills, conferencing and feedback, direct instruction, displaying your students' work, formative assessments, and then even student reflection and student self-assessment. So consider all these things that you already do that you could just transfer into an interdisciplinary unit. So how do you get started? You might start small, especially if you've never done this before. Um, in fact, the one thing that I recommend is just starting to notice when you're doing something that's interdisciplinary. So maybe you're teaching reading and you pick a science book, or maybe you're doing your morning meeting and you add a graph. So just start noticing those because those are seed ideas that we could take later on and grow them into a bigger unit. Do things that you're already doing anyway, like building your classroom community, teaching collaboration skills, teaching questioning strategies. Those are all skills that kids are going to need to, your students are going to need to know in order to be successful in these units that you're designing. And then maybe a little bit longer uh, later on, try a mini unit like uh, uh, an afternoon or maybe a day or two days. Maybe it's something you've already done. And then check out our DOE site for some asynchronous PD or even join a webinar with us. Maybe you're ready for something a little bit more. You're not ready to go full in yet, but you're ready for to plan something a little bit longer. So that's what I would do is start looking at something that's maybe one or two weeks. Another thing to do is looking at a Moose module and using either all of it or part of it. These are usually designed to be three to six weeks long and all the materials are involved. There's over 400 modules at this point. So there might be something for, for what you're looking for. And another thing to consider is joining a virtual PLC with us at the DOE. We've got many opportunities coming up. So please check our professional development page for more information. All right, uh, maybe you're all in and ready to go. And if so, I recommend planning out a longer unit maybe looking at four to six weeks. It could even be longer, depending on your class, your grade level, and your content area. Um, even your project might take longer. I'd still spend the fall building your classroom culture with a goal to do something in January or after February vacation. I don't recommend leaving things till the end of the year because it's a really busy time. Those are That's a good time of year for mini units. Another thing I recommend is joining uh, other teachers at your school, maybe even a PLC at your school to plan together. Maybe you're collaborating because many of you are interested in doing something and maybe you're interested in collaborating together. So I'm thinking maybe when you get to um, grade levels where you're an ELA teacher or you're a math teacher, you might wanna start uh, looking across the aisle and seeing how your work can come together. And then another thing you might want to think about is joining a virtual PLC with the DOE. We've got a few coming up in the fall that will help you work with other teachers across the state and get coaching to develop uh, a longer unit that you could use in January or February. For more information, please check out our website at maine.gov backslash DOE backslash learning backslash II. For more information about interdisciplinary instruction, professional development opportunities, and contact information. Thank you so much for listening to the presentation today. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to me, Jamie Beal at jamie.beal at maine.gov, and my number is 207 530 2689.